Hey guys and welcome back to another brand new video. Now today's video is a really quite a cool one, something that I've been looking forward to filming for quite a while. And so basically what we're doing today is we're going to be editing really nice kind of autumnal vibe photos. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be teaching you guys how to edit photos in a similar style to a few Instagram artists when they kind of edit their more autumn style photos. So the Instagram artists we'll be focusing on today are Peter McKinnon, so for example this kind of photo here, um, then Louise Claudio, or Claudio, uh, this kind of photo here, so you can see, uses some really nice kind of autumnal vibes, dark browns, kind of that kind of thing. I mean, they've got a lot of fade in their image. Um, Alan Palander as well. We did a video, I think, yesterday that went up about how to film like Alan Palander. Sorry, how to edit like Alan Palander. That was really successful. You guys really like that. Um, but similar to that, that kind of style, so more this kind of autumnal vibe. Um, then, of, of course, Tony Marford, this kind of similar style here, really quite autumnal. And then, as well, Oleg Cricket. So, again, a really nice autumnal vibe. So that's what we're gonna be doing in today's video, going through how to edit photos in that kind of style. Okay, so this video is kind of more aimed towards editing autumnal photos and not really how to replicate um, a specific Instagram artist style, but I use those other ones um, like Tony Marford, Oleg Cricket, Alan Panda, kind of at the beginning just kind of show you guys we're kind of gearing towards those people's styles, so their autumnal kind of photos. Now what I've done is I've put together a really nice preset pack, I spent quite a lot of time making this, uh, it's called Burnt Autumn, it's got about 16 presets in here, some really really nice presets you guys are really going to love. Um, what I try to do is kind of combine Alan Palander's style, Tony Marford style, Ole Cricket style, uh, even a bit of Peter McKinnon style, all of their autumnal photos and put them all into a preset pack. So my interpretation of their style, really good preset pack, I would thoroughly recommend you guys go and check it out. Um, I've used it in a lot of my photos and I'm not going to lie, it's a pretty stunning preset pack. So um, this is kind of an example here, this is using the Spark presets if I do before and after, that's simply one click it makes that look. Um, this is the magma preset on this photo, again before and after, before and after, really nice dark moody autumnal style. Um, then this one here, this is fire, this is my, I think my favourite one, this works really well with a lot of the images, really bright vivid oranges, dark crushed blacks, high clarity, high contrast, so before and after. Now this is the particular photo we're going to be editing in today's video, really excited to jump straight in, um, but I really recommend go ahead and check out that preset pack, the link will be down below in the description. Okay, so do stay until the end where we go down to the camera calibration, that is probably the most important part of this particular video, so do not skip the video yet. Keep watching until the end, that's really, really important. Um, it'll be towards the end of the video somewhere, so keep watching until the end. Now, while you're over there, before you go anywhere, um, I would recommend going ahead, checking out our whole shop pack at the moment. So every single one of our Lightroom presets, there's 300 plus Lightroom presets in there, as you can see, 75 plus Photoshop actions and thousands of overlays. They're just all crammed into one huge product. Now this contains all of our in the style of our famous Instagram artists. So we've got our interpretation of Brandon Werfel style, Alan Pamela style, Peter McKinnon style, Tony Marford style. All of these different ones are crammed all into this uh, huge bundle here. You can get all of our presets, all of our essential presets. You'll even get the autumnal look presets in there as well. So if you wanna get everything, go ahead, check out that product. It's an amazing product. Um, the link will be the first one down below in the description. It's hugely popular, people are really enjoying it. Um, if you wanna see what people wanna say, come down, look at the testimonials, what people say about us. Um, and if you're new around here, um, just kind of go through, look at what people say about it and kind of watch some of our videos and see what you have to think and kind of make your own judgment. But that again will be first link down below in the description. Do go ahead and check it out. Um, hugely popular and it's got a load of useful stuff in there. And of course there's a huge discount on the moment, 90% off, so go ahead and check that out. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight in and start editing these really cool autumnal photos. So as I said at the beginning, we're gonna be using my fire preset here. Um, as well as you can see, lots of uh, different ones work well on this image. So this is magma, for example. If I apply a really nice contrasty, um, high clarity image uh, with some really popping colors and dark desaturated blacks and stuff. Personally, I really love this look, so I've been really excited to kind of get this video out there. Um, but without any further ado, let's reset this, take it back to bare bones. Um, this is the first photo we're gonna be starting with, and let's dive straight in. Okay, so looking at these um, Instagram artists here, this is kind of just to kind of get a bit of an idea behind my thought process when I made this preset pack. Uh, so basically, what I looked at was Peter McKinnon, he's got these really nice autumnal looks in, the, in some of his photos. He's got high clarity, high contrast, some in this particular photo, he seems to have faded out his um, highlights here, but he's uh, got no fade in the shadows really, maybe a tiny bit down here. Um, really nice browns, uh, dark oranges, and everything else is pretty much desaturated. So he's got a lot of browns, oranges, and reds. Um, all of the blues pretty desaturated here, um, and everything else. Those are the main ones that kind of pop out. Uh, you can see this one here as well, um, bursting with clarity, bursting with contrast. Um, really nice, this is kind of very similar to the magma kind of preset pack that I, preset that I made. Um, really nice oranges and browns and again crushed desat um, desaturated colours, really crushed blacks. Um, similar thing, Luis Claudio, um, 
kind of more of an inspiration. I didn't really put this one into the preset pack because this one contains um, a shed ton of fade, um, but you can really kind of easily achieve that look by just bringing up the, the base of the shadows there. But as you can see, very similar style. We've got uh, nice browns, desaturated everything else. Not much going on in the picture other than like browns, dark greens, dark oranges, um, and lots of blacks. This um, particular artist doesn't use too much clarity and too much con um, yeah, too much clarity. Uses a lot of contrast, as you can see, really dark blacks, and adds in lots of fade. Um, Alan Panda, again, a lot of inspiration from Alan Panda went into this preset pack. Uh, you can check out our interpretation of Alan Panda's style as well. That will also be down below in the description. But as you can see here, again, really contrasty, high clarity blacks, really nice bright highlights, dark blacks. Um, and again, pretty much everything else is desaturated apart from the browns and oranges. Uh, really nice look there. Again, Tony Marford. Tony Marford is slightly different. Um, this was kind of brought again a bit of inspiration coming from Tony Marford. We have got a Tony Marford style preset pack art exhibition of him as well. Again, that will also be down below in the description, but you can just get that in the Hollister bundle if you are uh, so inclined to. But as you can see here, mostly desaturated. He has got um, a nice pop of the blue coming out on his head here. Uh, but as you can see, nice dark brown, dark oranges, and really nice blacks with lots of clarity and contrast. Again, Ole Cricket. Same story, desaturated blues, really nice crushed blacks, faded out the highlights there. Um, he's got a little bit of fade in his image, but pretty, pretty desaturated and very autumnal kind of look. So that's kind of the thought process behind my editing technique to kind of achieve these different looks. So you saw what we're doing, we're gonna kind of go for the fire look, which is really bright, uh, contrasty colors, nice bright oranges, um, really dark, desaturated blacks and blues, um, with huge amounts of clarity, huge amounts of uh, contrast and sharpness. Okay, so let's just dive straight in. Okay, so the first way to achieve this look is really just kind of bring up the temperature. So we wanna bring up, kind of make it a little bit warmer. Uh, so we're gonna bring it up to about 6,100 Kelvin. Uh, obviously this depends on your image. You're gonna have to change it depending on how um, orange or blue or warm or cold your image actually is. But for me, this kind of worked quite well. For the exposure, I'm gonna bring this up to about 0.1. Now that's just gonna kind of brighten up the image a little bit. This particular look I'm going for is a kind of a more saturated, bright, vibrant um, look. That's why it's called fire. Um, but some of the others, these other ones, for example, magma is more de like dark and moody. So obviously, if you want to get all these different looks, check out the preset pack. But this is what we're going for today: brightening up that image, kind of get in some of the, um, especially the bright whites up here. Contrast. We're going to bring that down a little bit, to about minus five. Um, that's because we're going to be bringing in a lot more contrast with the clarity slider, and we're going to be crushing those blacks as well and going to the tone curve. So we don't want to kind of make everything look too extreme. So we're going to kind of drop that back a little bit before we start going ahead and doing all that stuff later on. Okay, now looking at this particular image, we're not going to really do anything else with the highlight shadows, whites, and blacks because this photo at the moment is already pretty contrasty. Now, of course, it depends on your photo, uh, which photo you're, you guys are going to go ahead and edit. But for this particular photo, we've got really dark blacks down here, as you can see. Um, and I don't want to bring up the shadows and bring in that detail because obviously with this particular preset or this particular look we're going for is a really dark contrasty look. So if I bring up those shadows, that's going to kind of counteract from that feel. So that's why I'm going to leave these all as standard. But obviously it depends on your image. If your image was really dark like this, bring them up a little bit and kind of adjust your highlights and stuff. But because this is quite a moody day when this photo was taken, we don't have any really bright highlights. We have a lot of dark blacks, but we want to keep that contrast in there. Okay, now this is the next thing that really makes this image pop. Now, a lot of the time I go on about clarity and not bringing it up too much, but for this photo, we're gonna bring it up to 45. Now that is just because it works really well with this style. Obviously, you've got to use clarity in moderation, but for this particular style, a bunch of clarity really adds to the look and kind of makes that really gritty, bright, warm color. So we're gonna add in a bunch of clarity about plus 45. We're gonna leave the vibrancy um, and saturation as standard at the moment. We might come back and adjust these later on, but as you can see in the basics panel, not much is going on. Most of it will be going on down below. Okay, so next up we have the tone curve. Now with the tone curve, um, I like to do my standard S point curve. So we just put in the three dots here, one, two, and three, one of the highlights, mid-tones and shadows. Now we're gonna bring um, down those shadows just a tiny bit. Actually, no, we're gonna bring them up just a little bit in this case, because we have got very dark shadows. Um, and then the highlights we're also gonna bring up a little bit, just kind of add in that contrast there, brighten up those highlights you can see on top of the car. Um, really nice look there. So if I turn it off and on, very subtle uh, look. And as, as I said earlier at the beginning, if you wanted to, you can put in a bit of fade, but I'm not going to in this particular image just by bringing up the shadows there. Now, I don't wanna do that, so we're gonna leave that, but that's all we're gonna do in the tone curve. Now, coming down to the HSL sliders, this is really what's gonna kind of bring the, the whole picture uh, to life. Okay, so coming down, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing down the, the all the greens in this image down towards the yellowy, orange, burnt, kind of brown kind of colour. So what we're going to be doing with that is coming down to the hue panel here, grabbing hold of our oranges, bringing them down to about minus 15, um, bringing the yellows down to about minus 25. Um, and as you can see, that already is kind of 
really bringing it down a little bit a touch especially the moss down here more towards the the brown oranges kind of side now most of this is going to be in the green slider so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring this all the way down to about minus 50 here minus 55. now as you can see already this image looks a little bit more autumnal we've got more of those oranges more of those browns in there but um, as you saw at the beginning of the video if i hover over the fire preset here if you look in the top left um, we're not really anywhere near that kind of look at the moment. So as I said at the beginning, stay until the end and watch the camera calibration because that's where all of this really comes into play and we kind of make those colors burst with the saturation. Okay, now we can leave all the other um, hue sliders here as kind of standard. We're not going to do anything with those because we don't have many blues in there and we don't really want to add any teal to it. And you'll also see why we're not going to adjust those in a minute because it won't make any difference. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing down the saturation of everything apart from our oranges and our green. Okay, so we're going to bring our yellows, the saturation just drop those down a touch. Um, that's just to kind of make a little bit more contrast in the trees because when we make this all really orange, what's going to happen is all the greens here, every different hue of it, are going to look really saturated and really vibrant. So if I bring down the yellows, bring down the saturation a little bit, you can see if I bring it all the way down, there are certain patches here that are kind of going to look darker and kind of look more black in contrast with the bright orange that are kind of next to it. So it makes a really nice effect. So we're going to drop those oranges back down to minus 15. We're going to leave the yellows and the greens again at a standard, leave them at zero. Okay, so now this is really what makes and breaks the image in terms of the saturation, is we're going to get the aquas and the blues, and we're going to drop those all the way down to minus 100. So basically all that does is makes essentially all the blues and the aquas look black and white. Now what I do like to do in some of these presets here is, it's not all the way down to minus 100, it's down to about minus 90, minus 80, just kind of, so you can tell there's a little bit of colour in there, but there's not too much. You can also bring in a little bit more of the blue colour later on in the split zoning, but for this particular image we're going to bring those all the way down to minus 100. Okay, so what I really like to do in this particular image is make those oranges and those greens really pop. So we're going to do that by bringing up the luminance of the orange, yellows and greens. Um, again, just 15, just throwing some numbers. 20 uh, with the greens, it's going to be most of them, so obviously bring those up to about plus 25 as well. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a brief before and after, so before and after, before and after. So you can see immediately what we've done is we've added in a load of contrast, the clarity has really brought out those highlights and crushed those blacks, and we're also kind of changing more towards the autumnal side and make those colours pop. It's really giving us this nice gritty look. Okay, so we're going to do something slightly different in the split toning here. Now, usually what I like to do is I like to add in a nice orange to the highlights and I like to add in a nice blue to the shadows. We're going to be doing the opposite here and we're going to add in some blue to the highlights and some orange to the shadows. Now that's because most of our image here is shadows. So the trees are all in the shadows and seeing as we're trying to make all the trees look really orange, um, that doesn't really make much sense to put in the blues where we're trying to put in some orange. So we're going to kind of switch those around a bit. So we want a nice cool highlights, so we're going to put in about around 230 here um, with a saturation of about 15. Now as you can see here especially in the road that kind of adds in a bit more blue into the image so where we kind of took out all the saturation of the blue here we can really kind of control the the colour in the highlights there by bringing it back in, in the split tonings I mentioned earlier. Now as you can see if you hold down option or alt you can see the colour we've just put back in the highlights there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put in uh, 50 onto the show and again with a saturation of 15. Now just to see what that did, if I hold down Alt, you can see that adds in that really nice orange kind of glow uh, there into the highlights. So if I turn those off and on, really subtle, but you can definitely see we add in some more orange, more of a uniform orange look across the trees and the, the plants in the background. I think we're just going to bring it all out to 50. Um, now that achieves two looks or two kind of things in this image. Obviously it's going to sharpen the image a little bit, but also what it's doing is it's going to add in some noise and some grit and some grain into the image. Now that is quite intentional, that's what I'm going for. I want a really kind of a gritty kind of feel to this image. So adding in that there, that makes a really nice effect. You can also come down later on into the effects panel um, and add in some grain, which you might do in a minute, but um, that also adds in, sharpening adds in a nice kind of controls how much we're going to bring in there. Okay, so we're not going to do anything with the noise reduction because that's going to soften the image. And as I just said, we want it nice and gritty and quite hard. So we're going to come down to the effects panel next and we're going to add in a tiny bit of vignette just by dropping that down to about minus 10. So all that really does is it darkens the corners here and just kind of draws the viewer's attention more towards the center of the image, which of course is our car right here, the centerpiece, um, and kind of draws it in. So oh, that's a nice breeze up there. Okay. Coming down finally, we're going to come down to the grain. So you, just a second ago, I mentioned we like to add in a bit of grit into this image. So we're going to go a bit mad. We're going to add in 50 on the grain. So that's really going to kind of grit, put in some grit into the image. Um, what we'll do here is we'll zoom in so you guys can kind of see that. You can see got a lot of noise here um, in the image. A nice bit of grit and a bit of grain just kind of add in that really wet, autumnal, crunchy kind of vibe to the image. Okay, so this is what you guys have all been waiting for. 
we're coming down to the camera calibration. So this is what's going to really change the entire look of the image. Now we're going to go absolutely ham on this and we're going to change the settings to some insane number which won't necessarily work with all of your photos. So um, I would suggest not necessarily jumping straight in and doing this with all of your photos. Kind of try it a little bit and see what look kind of works best. But for this particular photo, we really want to make those colors pop. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the red primary all the way up to plus 100. Now, as you can see, that changes the greens there, it changes the color. So if we bring it down to the left, it makes a more kind of desaturated green look, bring it up to the right, adds in like a more contrasty orangey green, uh, which is kind of more in the direction we want to go for. If we grab the green primary and bring it down to the left as well, that's again adding in a lot more orange and yellow into the colors there. So you can see if I bring it up to the right, again, really desaturates the greens. We don't want that, we want more of that kind of yellowy orange. And then finally, to make the whole image look really bright and orange, we're going to bring the blue primary all the way down to the left as well. So you can see immediately the difference that camera calibration made. So I turn that camera calibration off and on again, it really adds in that bursting orange color, which is obviously which is why the preset is called file, um, because I mean, it looks like it's on fire. So that is basically what we're gonna do in the camera calibration there, just kind of really add in that nice burnt orange feel to the image. We can leave all the saturations at zero, but it, sometimes it's nice to just kind of tone back the oranges a little bit to make it more burnt. Um, but for this particular image, of course, we're gonna go for the really saturated vibe. So we're gonna leave all these ones at zero. Okay, so that is pretty much it, guys. The The edit is pretty much done. Like, you can see how really simple and how basic that was, but how much of a drastic contrast that can do. So if I turn it off and on again, before and after, before and after, you can see how much we've managed to change the look of the image. Now, something that's really nice to do at the end of this is kind of add in a four by five aspect ratio, just to kind of get it ready for social media. Uh, if you're gonna post it, especially to Instagram, just put it into a vertical sense and zoom in. Sometimes it's really nice with these car images to kind of split them halfway through like this. Um, now we've got a lot of dead space over here, so we might just bring that in a little bit. Um, now if we click done, there we go. You can see a really, really nice effect has been achieved here. Um, if I do it before oh, and after, you can see, especially we've got so much more grit, so much more grain and clarity and contrast, especially in the car there, and that really nice bursting orange or tunnel look that we were going for at the beginning. So I'm just going to reset that really quickly, um, just so you guys can have a look at the whole image. Uh, let's put that on full screen, so you guys can have a look. Okay guys, so that is the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed that. One of my favourite videos to film, one of my favourite preset packs. Now obviously this is kind of geared towards the autumnal style of Peter McKinnon, Tony Marford, Alan Palander, um, Ole Cricket. We will make a... Uh, different preset pack in our style of early cricket at some point in the future we will do like a future video of that but do recommend going ahead and checking out if you do like it um, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments what you think about this I really like this style I'm going to kind of gear my Instagram more towards this style would recommend checking me out on Instagram I will be down below in the description go ahead and check me out as well go and check out my brother but thanks for watching guys um, do go ahead and check out the whole shot pack first thing down below in the description thank you so much for watching we'll see you guys in the next video live long and prosper